So you mentioned going to Asia. Mm -hmm. I said it progressed real quick. You did. (laughs) Walk us through like what, I mean, there's people listening that don't understand what it means to sign worldwide and Mm -hmm. be a model and model and stuff like that. So explain what that is and then what it's like being that young and thinking, you know what, I'm going to Asia, which is halfway around the world. Somewhere (laughs) I've never been, right? Growing up in Woodward or in Oklahoma, like that's a, that's a pretty big deal. Absolutely. So when you sign with an agency, typically whatever state or city they are in, that is the only place they'll represent, represent you in. So when I signed to Heather in Oklahoma, she only books me jobs throughout Oklahoma and Oklahoma city. So then if I wanted to work in other areas of, you know, our country or other countries, I had to sign with agencies in those cities. So Heather reached out and sent my portfolio, which is basically just, you know, images of me that have been taken professionally to agencies all over the world. And one of them, IMG models, um, who represents huge names, some of the biggest stars in the entire industry, um, Um, liked me and they offered me a contract to sign in New York, London, Milan, Paris, and Australia. And so I did that and I signed and therefore I had an agency in each one of those cities. But because I was so young, because at the time I was like 13, 14, it wasn't, I could work over here in the States, but it wouldn't have been a lot. And it would have, there are a lot of laws um, in the industry for child models. So kind of a way about that was simply to be like, Hey, do you want to go over to Asia and you can start working full time? And so I signed with agencies in Singapore and Tokyo. And so right away, once I'd signed with IMG and they're based out of New York, they they were like, okay, well, we want to get you started right now. So I signed with them. And then like a month later or less, I had already had these contracts in Asia. And so I did, I went to Singapore first. And, and at the time it's so funny. I was 14. I'd never been out of the country. I purposely, you know, we had to go get a passport so that I could do these things. We had to get the visas. We had to, you know, just do everything. There was a list. There was months and months of planning or as long as we could have before I had to go over. And then I went and I had a two month contract in Singapore for the first time that I went, I believe. And then I hopped over to Tokyo right after that. And I I was thrown in. I started working full time. You know, I got there. I think the next day I landed, I think at like midnight in Singapore. And the next day at 8 a.m. I had to go into my agency and meet the whole crew, take digitals. And then they sent me out on a lot of castings that day all over the city. Very quickly had to figure out the metro system, had to figure out language barriers, had to figure out how to introduce myself at a casting. I'd never met that many people before. I'd never done anything of that sort. And just right away, first, first day off the plane, I was just dove in to it and started booking jobs and started going on shoots and just kind of evolved. And it was really fun. Um, so I did that. And then I went on to Tokyo and that was basically my life, just going back and forth between those two cities and working full time until I, until I was 18. <laughs> wow. So you were there for that whole time. I came back to Oklahoma, um, for a bit. I do, I would do Singapore, Tokyo, Oklahoma, Singapore, Tokyo, Oklahoma, every time and get like, you know, a good little mix of home and family, but also modeling was something I wanted to do. And it was something that I had a lot of fun with. So if I could be over there, that was where I wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So, so like during this whole time, you're like kind of do you taking like online classes and still doing schoolwork as well as like being rushed around the, the world basically and modeling. Yeah. So I went to my first semester of high school, freshman year at Piedmont, Mm -hmm. and then I switched over to an online school. And that's what I did whenever I was over there. It was online schooling in between my, you know, my crazy schedule with castings and and photo shoots and runway shows and in the whole thing. Um, I log on at night and try to get my schooling done. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was in, I went to Japan in 2014. And we thought we kind of stayed, there was like a mall area and shopping center and stuff. Okay. And they take fashion to a new level in Japan, right? Well, like for I'm me, sure. like what I see, like when you walk into a store or whatever, like the way I kind of explain it to people over here or, or back home was that when you, when you drive, when you go to a store and you see like the person in the store or someone has dressed a mannequin, right? And they kind of push the boat out when they dress a the mannequin, mm-hmm. like runway stuff. Like it's, it's out there. That they just walk into a store and say, I want the entire, and they would wear their entire outfit. It's the first time I've ever seen that other than on a runway. Absolutely. But it's not just one person. It's every single person. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. They, they love it. And that was, so I went to Singapore for a couple of months first. And that's, that's a culture, not entirely 
I'm not as big, I guess, of a culture shock as it was going to Tokyo. So I kind of like was able to get myself acclimated a little bit. Um, but then, yes, I did go to Tokyo. And right away, the first week I was there, I went to castings for Tokyo Fashion Week. And so not only was I thrown in with the culture and with everybody there, but then they had in all their biggest stars, people from all over the world flying in for this event, for this week of Fashion Week there in Tokyo. And so it was just that times a hundred. And so, yeah, it is kind of like what you said, like whenever you see store mannequins, um, it's that, but they take it even to the next level head to toe and they go all out and it, it's, it's truly amazing what they do. Yeah, no, it is. And I was like, the first time I saw someone, I was like, okay, that's not real. Like, and then I just kept seeing this, like people and like, okay, this is clearly a thing here. Uh, mm-hmm. And you're like, it is incredible. And to the point that we're like, their pets were also part of their accessory and their outfit. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to have, you know, your dog and your little purse that you're carrying on your shoulder in the stroller. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big deal here. Uh, <laughs> 